So good morning. Today I want to record a new video about the Python connector. So there is the option in AnyLogic that you include Python coding. And for some of my research, I'm using hybrid models where the discrete event environment and or the agent based environment are calling Python code and that happens more often during the simulation runtime. So for instance, travel salesman problem is solved every day because new orders have arrived and you want to deliver those orders to your customers daily and you want to minimize the mileage. So for that, I prepared a short slide. So what do I need? What do you need? to implement the Python connector in your AnyLogic project. Of course, you need AnyLogic itself. So for that, also the PLE version is sufficient enough. Then you need a Python distribution. I'm using here Anaconda. And finally, you need an IDE. And on my machine, I mostly use PyCharm, but it is also possible to use Spider. So let me switch now to the Python distribution. So here in anaconda.com, you can download your anaconda. We are going to do that. It takes a few seconds. After we have downloaded it, we install it. We can do the same with Spider and I and or PyCharm. We need to install them, and you need also to install AnyLogic. So once we have installed Anaconda, we can start the Anaconda Navigator. That looks as follows. So this is the Anaconda Navigator. And the first thing what we have to install are or is an environment. You can see that I have here two environments already um, present. You can install here a new one by clicking create new one. You can give a name to this environment. Then the Python distribution is connected and you can create it. And then it looks like my test environment here. Finally, what we are doing, um, we start this environment. And the idea is that you get a Python exe file in this environment, which will be linked in the AnyLogic file itself. So that means within AnyLogic, we need the path of this test environment. And then and a logic knows where to find the Python uh, interpreter, can start the Anaconda environment and can run the coding. What we can see as well here are all the packages what are requested for your specific Python code. You can install them, you can search them. So you can not install them and then you can search here the package. You can download it and install it in your environment. This is needed to be able to run your Python code properly. So what we can see on this screen is the Python connector. So you can go to this web page. I will post that as well in the YouTube link. And then you can download the latest release. And uh, what we need is here the char file. This pipeline char file, you download that. And the next step is that I show you how you can install that in your AnyLogic model. And you will also find examples so you can also download those examples there are updated 
because the pipeline connector is regularly updated and it will get more functionality over the time. So the 1.4 was when I did with my students master thesis with this hybrid modeling approach one and a half years ago. And now we are already with its latest release in 191. So thank you so much for updating this pipeline connector. So once we have updated it, we can open Analogic. We can see here already a model. I open it. And um, what we need to install first is this pipeline connector. So you can go here on the palette and then we can add the downloaded pipeline um, connector by managing the libraries. And then you can click on add. Then you search um, where we have downloaded this char file. You enter it, you open it, and then it should look like this that I got a new library called pipeline Tyler Wolf Adam version 9191. And where I have uh, its location based, you click on OK. And what uh, will change is you get a new palette, which is the pipeline, and then you find the JSON fire and the Pi communicator. And this Pi communicator is exactly what you need for the following steps to make the connection to your Python coding. So we can drag and drop it into the model. So like this one. And then uh, we need to find the path of the Python distribution. And um, please remember that we have exactly for this reason installed or generated a new um, environment. We have already started this environment. So we are using exactly the path of this environment. So we open the browser, we go to the hard disk, we can go to the users, then my user is Alexa. Then we go to the Anaconda 3 folder. Then we go to environments, ENVs. And then we can see within this environment, there is my new generated test environment. And we find this test environment, also the Python exe. And this is exactly the path what we need to enter. So C users, Alexa, Anaconda 3, ENVs. The last one is the environment, which is in my case test. And then we need also Python.exe. So if you click here, you can see that, that I have selected the path. Um, exactly what we said uh, under quotations. Slashes, two slash, slashes are needed. Users, Alexa, on account of three, ENVs, test, and the Python.exe. If that is done, then um, the setup of the Python connector is done. And then we can go for a little example. And I will show you how you can transfer data from Analogic to Python and vice versa from Python to Analogic that you can use data, the results from Analogic or from Python to be more precise in Analogic. And you can set up um, your Python code based on the actual situation of the simulation by transferring data from Analogic to Python. So then we go to a simple Python example. Thank you so much, Yube Ohms, for generating those two files. And what happens here is that we are defining um, two parameters n and m, n is 10, and m is 5. And we are just returning those two parameters um, when 
this file is called. So basically what I want to show here is how to transfer data from Python to Analogic. So this file is the temp.py and we go back to the Analogic file. If we click on the properties of the name, I can see that um, I'm running the temp file. So what I have shown you, the transfer of this 5 and 10. And I'm storing the results in a list. And I do that in, uh, in the form that I um, open my Python integration, which is the Python connector, run results, and I execute this temp file. And if I um, want to see the results, um, then I use Traceland to visualize the results on the console. And then I transfer the results to uh, the two variables num mach and num chops. So the first one goes to mach and the second one goes to job. So we can go back here. So the first one is 10. Sorry, the first one is the M, so it's the 5. And the second one is the 10. So 5 and 10. So we are going to run that, um, the pipeline. The Java applet is generated. Here is the Java applet. And we get C1. The num mach is 5. And the number of jobs is 10. And we want to change that. Then we go back um, to the PyCharm and we enter, for instance, instead of this 10, a 20. Then I'm going to stop this model here. Where is my analogic? I start it again. Bam, it's here and we can see now the number of jobs is 20 and the number of Mach is 5. Remember, this is what we have transferred. This n is the second parameter and this m is the first parameter. So the last one, what I want to show you is the second file temp1.py. What is happening here that is I want to get one parameter from Analogic. I want to do some calculations and I send the result back to Analogic. So the calculations are done in Python. And then I want to use those results in Analogic. So I define some global variables, uh, h, n, n, and z, uh, the well-known function from before the execute function. Um, um, those are the global values, z, n, n, and h. I predefine n and n, 10 and 5. And I want to get h from the simulation so that I can calculate z. And then I want to print z as well. So we go to the analogic file. Here is um, the import of this uh, second amp1 file. And here we go to the second solution. The first one is I call the Python connector, Python integration. I run it and I transfer the variable h to Python by doing um, this attributes. Then I execute um, the Python code so that um, so I'm running it and I'm calling the function execute. And then um, again, I'm storing the parameters in mach1 and mach2. The m and the n and the set is um, calculated by running the results run results and then I get access um, like this this is a double value 
And what I want to get is from my temp1 file, the variable set. And then I'm going to print it on the console by tracing it. So let's remember what we did. So we need the mach1 and the mach2. Mach1 and mach2 is 10 and 5. So we run it again in pipeline. So 10 and 5. And when we go to the console, um, we have the 10 uh, times uh, 5 is 50. Then uh, this comes from those two values are coming from Python. This value, this h value is defined within any logic. And if I multiply those and this calculation is done in Python, 10 times 5 is 50 times 10 is 500. So to show you that um, the import is working, I changed that to 5. If I execute it again, it should be 250. Set value should be 250. And is it happening? Yes, it's 250 because it's 10 times 5 is 50 times 5 is 150. So this is what um, I wanted to show you, how you can transfer data from Python to any logic and vice versa. And of course, this data can be, um, in, in my case, I just um, did some uh, parameters or variables, and you can also exchange um, um, arrays, array lists. So it depends on the data structure you want to use. Um, if you want to have a closer look on different data structure, you can also use the Python connector examples. Good luck with modeling in any logic by using the Python connector.